A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Welcome. It's another Monday morning, the 18th, mm -hmm. the day of December 2023. The year is winding down. Yeah. By the way, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rene Paulson. Today is going to be a very wonderful day. Um, it's always a wonderful day when you wake up because you are waking up to a very, very brand new day. And no day is ever the same as the one that has passed. To yesterday has passed, today is the present. So let us make the best use of this present that God has given to us. Yeah, with every new day comes new opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so make the best of what you have. The opportunities that come in today, seize them. You know how they say, make hay while the sun shines? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but one this, thing, this oh, is our sun. <laughs> woo, let's talk about the weather. <laughs> when, you, when you call the sun and you remember the kind of sun we have in life, mm. it's like, Mm, it's so hard. We need to take this um, uh, climate change thing really seriously. Serious. Right. Because if the ozone la layer is depleting faster than we can evolve, mm. because the scientists tell us that there's evo evolution, so we can evolve and begin to adapt to the situation, hot sun, weather's changing and all that. But the evolution, the rate of evolution would be so slow and mm. if the, the ozone la layer is destroyed in a very fast way, that means we could just Go become extinct, extinct yeah. like uh, the dinosaurs. Mm. Well, we pray that doesn't happen. But one thing I'm excited about today is the fact that it's seven days to Christmas, officially. So you know how there's been um, 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, so, like, I've been yeah. counting down the days. I'm like, seven days. Okay. This time next to week. To some people, it's yay. It's seven days to Christmas. To some people, it's, oh, I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope that's not the case for you this yeah. morning. Yes. Anyways, um, let's go to our top trending stories. Um, we have, first, we have our teasers, which is Sarah sues INEC over failure to prosecute electoral offenders. And also we'll be discussing difficulties in mental health associated with corporate begging. But then let's go to our top trending stories for today, the ones that caught our attention. And one of the top trending stories this morning is the fact that three people were found dead and seven others injured in Lagos Ibadan Expressway accident. Three people have died with seven on the others sustaining injuries in an accident involving two vehicles at the corn oil filling station axis on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway on Saturday. This was disclosed yesterday in a statement by the Ogun Sector Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, Florence Okwe, in Abelkuta, the state capital. According to Okwe, the incident occurred at 9.23 p.m. when a speeding Toyota Hayas bus with registration numbers, um, LG, anyways, lost control and collided with another trailer. The FRSC spokesperson also explained that 18 people, including 16 men and two women, were involved in the accident, noting that the injured victims were taken to Idera Hospital Shagamo for medical attention. Okwe stated that the deceased were deposited at the morgue of the same hospital. On his part, the sector commander, Anthony Uga, urged motorists to consider this period of high vehicular movement and poor visibility due to weather conditions. Yeah, I, I don't know. Our people are very impatient. Some of these accidents are avoidable. You know, everybody wants to overtake the other. I don't mm. know whether that is how they judge themselves as being expert drivers or something. Someone will overtake you just to stop the next mm -hmm. few uh, yards. So why not just be, be patient, patient for the person to pass and then you, you go yeah. and park. And at the end of the day, even though you're rushing so much, guess what? You're only going to save about two minutes. So why rush? Why rush to your deaths of times? Do you mm. understand? Or even the deaths of others because this is a collision between two vehicles, right? Something similar happened to me, um, I think about two weeks ago. Mm. Um, I was coming from the expressway from the mainland and the vehicle in front of me stopped abruptly. So. Obviously, I'm trying to maybe be... to carry a passenger. No, 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 no. It was a, it was a, it was a an SUV. But then me, I'm trying to be a defensive driver, so I tried to like, you know, move the other way a little bit. And the person behind me just hit me right there. My bumper was half of it was dragging, was being dragged on third mainland. But guess what? If I wasn't being defensive and I tried to move the other way, that would have been a double collision. So mm -hmm. I would have hit the person head on. The person behind me would have hit me head on. And God forbid, I don't know if I'll be here today, but guess the reason why this happened? It was because a bus was trying to reverse on the expressway. Why Just like you, that. Why would you even do that? 
impatience is a, it's, it's, it's killing us. It's killing a lot of people, especially in this Lagos. Some people will run across the road mm. when vehicles are coming just to wait on the other side to stop a bus. And I call Lagos a five-minute uh, city. That being that, whatever you need, you'll find in the next five minutes. You need a, a pedestrian walkway. Mm. It's just five minutes away. You need even traffic to be so much so that you can walk leisurely across mm. the road. It's five minutes away. Everything in Lagos is five minutes away. So why are you even rushing? Yeah. I, I just don't understand. Some people feel to show that I'm in Lagos, I have arrived, I have to rush. You know, Lagos is on fast forward mm. and all that. Even and running to get buses. I remember when I was in much later, you see people actually jumping on motorway yeah. buses and stuff. It's ridiculous. And I think at the end of the day, we really need to... Our, our lives matter. Your life matter. And others around you as well. You mm -hmm. can't just, you know, be moving swiftly, rushing somewhere else. And the person, you're not even thinking of the safety of the other people, the other passengers on the road as well. You should save your lives and save, you should save your life and save the lives of others as well. What they say in traffic is that as you're driving your car, you're driving the cars of others as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll be thinking, what would that person do that I may or may not like? There's so a saying that's, there's a saying, they say all the drivers in Lagos are mad. <laughs> Yeah, but so think they are mad people and you're yes. the same one, so you're trying to navigate for everyone. Mm -hmm. So um, another thing that makes people do what they're doing here in Nigeria is the it's not my portion kind of thing. And then mm. you're blaming the other person, your uncle, your innocent uncle or auntie in the village is the one, village people village are people. coming after you. FRSC will always tell you that this period is very unsafe don't overload don't overspeed mm. i'm not a scientist all that but i do know that now that the air is lighter everything is lighter even mm. your car speeding will be more mm. so don't think the way your car used to swerve in the rainy season will still say, be, be the, same. the same way that it will do at this time so just be careful with yeah. whatever you're doing don't yeah. overspeed because everywhere is dry everywhere is moving there's uh, no obstructions on the road and all that mm -hmm. must we put speed bumps on every corner of our roads before we can break you down mm, that's so sad anyways um our condolences to the families of you know the people who lost their lives and yeah, they rest in peace. They rest in peace, okay. Um, another story that caught our attention is Cambridge announces Nigerian professor as seventh president. The University of Cambridge has announced the professor of pharmaceutical nanoscience, Ijoma Uchegu, as the seventh president of Wolfson College, one of its 31 colleges to su succeed the current president, Professor Jane Clark, on October 1, 2024. This was made known in a statement on the university's website. Uchegu is known for her groundbreaking work in nanoparticle drug delivery. The Nigerian professor currently lectures at the University College London. Professor Uchegu is currently a professor of pharmaceutical nanoscience at University College London. Her pioneering work on the mechanisms of drug transport has led to the development of new treatments which promise to transform pain relief, including encephaline pain medicine candidate and Velta designed to address the opioid crisis. Her work has won her numerous awards, fellowships and accolades as she holds positions on several academic boards and councils including the Wellcome Trust, the Academy of Medical Sciences and is an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry. As Pro Vice Provost for Africa and the Middle East at UCL, she played a leading role in forging new research partnerships in those regions as UCL's provost envoy for race equality. She also helped steer the institution's race equality agenda. In a reaction to the news, Uchegu said, I am so thrilled to be joining Wolfson College, an ambitious and forward-thinking college. Uchegu was raised in the southeast Nigeria and Hackney. She completed her pharmaceutical studies in the University of Benin in 1981 before attending the University of Lagos to obtain her master's degree. After returning to, you, to the UK, she studied postgraduate work at the University of London, earning a PhD in 1997 and worked as a lecturer at the University of Strathclyde from 2002 to 2004. That's really commendable. I mean, I love it when Nigerians are winning mm. and taking giant strides. Um, this is an inspiration to 
other women and even men in general, everyone in general, that whatever you set your mind to, you can achieve it. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Nigeria or you're in Afghanistan. I like the fact that she studied in Benin and then yes, Lagos. Yes, and Lagos. And moved that's over the to foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time she studied in Benin and Lagos, the educational standard, I'm sure, was a li little yes, bit better. better. Um, so why can't we return to those days? And as we hurry in Nigeria, we like when people achieve, we applaud them and say they are Nigerians. And I ask myself, if she were in Nigeria, would she have the same opportunities? Mm. Because I saw a very disturbing and very, I don't know how, nation-killing uh, trend during the election where people were asked to go back to where they belong. Mm. Uh, Nigeria is our country and there are some people who were born and raised in Lagos and then you're telling them they're not Lagos enough mm -hmm. even when their parents or some of their parents were from here and you're telling them that they're not Lagos enough. Lagos that used to be a place we used to say um, people can thrive here no matter yeah. where you come from yeah. and all that and everybody began to say it doesn't belong to you, it doesn't belong to you. So this is a Nigerian, even if he has a green card or any other thing that makes her a citizen of that country, she still is a Nigerian. And I'm mm -hmm. asking myself, if that college were in Lagos or in Ibadan or something, would she have become president? Mm -hmm. I saw also a, um, at a time in Cross River State where um, an attorney general was supposed to be appointed. It was her time to, to become that. She rose through the hierarchy of uh, the law profession, uh, anyhow, mm -hmm. and it was her time. She's married to a cross Riverian, and she's from Akwaibom State, and they mm -hmm. said she's not an indigent. What? And it took them like six months or more before they could confirm her to be the, uh, what she was supposed That's to ridiculous. be. ridiculous. And it was, it, was, I w it was really annoying, really mm. depressing for anybody who knows that a nation cannot be built any community, in short, cannot mm -hmm. be built with only the citizens of that community. Yes. There is no community that is is fast moving, fast mm -hmm. growing. That is so, developed, so, so developed so by yes, developed by only the people mm -hmm. that are from there. I have not seen one. Yeah, because when you're getting other people to come in, they're coming with fresh ideas. They're mm -hmm. coming with different cultures. Um, you have like a variety of things, and that is the spice of life. We like to say so. You can't just say it has to be um, one person or one ind indigent. You should have other people that would come and spice things up. Yeah. And anyways, I'm really happy for, for her. I'm happy that she's making giant strides and it's an inspiration to me and many yeah, others. For all, every other Nigerian, just know that um, wherever you go, you can thrive, you, yeah. can, you can flourish, you can make us proud. No matter mm. how many years she has lived there, now we can still beat our chest and say she's Nigerian. She's Nigerian. So when you go out there, be an ambassador to Nigeria, no matter what you're doing. Yes. Okay, and the last top trending story this morning is um, someone, Mr. Olatubosun Oyutiloye, a chieftain of the All Progressive Congress APC in Ocean State, has appealed to President Bola Tinubu to urgently intervene in the hike on, on prices of essential drugs in the country. Oyutiloye, who made the appeal while, while speaking with newsmen on Sunday in Oshobo, said that many Nigerians were currently unable to access most essential drugs due to the extreme high prices. He said the escalating prices of the drugs could be attributed to a combination of factors, which include the withdrawal of GSK, a major player in the pharmaceutical industry, and the high rate of inflation in devaluation of Naira. Oyutiloye said that the factors, among others, have made prices of drugs such as amlodipine, augmentin, paracetamol, exforge, quartem, and other essential drugs to become unaffordable for the common man. According to him, the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, has revealed that the value of medicines imported to Nigeria rose by 68% to 81.8 billion between July and September. Oyitiloye, a former lawmaker, said the surge in the prices of the drugs had placed a significant financial strain on individuals and families already struggling with the harsh economy. When the local currency weakens against foreign currencies, the expenses incurred in procuring these essential medical supplies rise, consequently driving up the overall prices in medicines of the country, in the country. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just going to laugh. I don't know what the president will do. He can't do anything. Um, 
except he's going to give us palliatives in drugs or, <laughs> or he's going to give um, subsidy in drugs, which mm. I, I don't think is the way to go. The subsidy we know that cuts across all sectors has been removed. Mm. The dollar or the naira against the dollar, which we know that that's what we do international trade with, mm -hmm. is, uh, is And we bastardized. do a lot of the importation. Yes. Uh, so these are the basic things. If these things cannot be corrected, and then th there's insecurity as well. Mm -hmm. If these things cannot be corrected, there's no way the, uh, the president is going to intervene. Will he buy paracetamol for every household? Mm -hmm. Or buy a central, keep get a central place where people can access paracetamol for well, free? I think that's what healthcare comes in because I mean in other countries I remember when I was in uni in the UK I could go to the GP and it gives me like drugs for free certain drugs so things like paracetamol should be free you will see that politicians will take cartons and cartons and keep and be giving us palliative so it will not work because if if all these things are put in place, the basic things that make life meaningful to Nigerians are put in place, nobody would need the government to do yes. anything about drugs and all that. Companies will come mm -hmm. because there is security, the dollar is stable or the naira is stable, mm -hmm. and then we have a, a fuel that is running every business or at yeah. least power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stable that, that power. Is stable. If we have all these things, if you go to Ghana, for instance, and you're subscribing, or you 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 recharging your phone. The amount of time you will use, maybe a thousand naira worth of airtime, is like double or triple of what you will do in Nigeria because they have steady power. Mm. Now all the service providers in Nigeria are factoring in the diesel that they have to buy, mm. everything that they need to do. That's why our tariffs are so so high. high. So put those things in place. Companies will come. You don't need to glob throat before you can get investors to come yeah. into Nigeria. When they know, when they come to Nigeria, they don't even know whether they, got, they are going to make money. Tomorrow the dollar is skyrocketing. Tomorrow is somewhere it's not stable and all that. There's no security. Mm -hmm. their, their companies could be burnt anytime. And then you're telling them to come to Nigeria. It I mean, you, 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 you're asking foreign investors to come in. Meanwhile, the ones you have here are leaving. are leaving. We're talking about GSK leaving. Other companies are also leaving as well. So have you made your economy stable enough that these people can come and thrive? Doing business in Nigeria, people say, is quite tasking. You're not even sure of getting your money back, returns on investment. But then you still want to go out and ask people to come. So why would someone want to come to a harsh economy whereby they are not sure if they can make their money back? So I think what we need to do is make sure that we stabilize the economy one, make sure that, you know, those double taxation, just yeah. make, make it more appealing for people to say, okay, I want to come and invest in Nigeria. We're seeing other countries like even Ghana, the people are investing there. You're seeing companies go there. I, but see, Nigeria, I, see, I see very soon uh, companies doing, doing the Lagos Ogun thing. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you go to a Ogun State, every corner of Ogun State, there are companies. Mm -hmm. When you think about companies in the Southwest, you'll find them in Ogun State because there is market in Lagos, but Lagos, the taxation and everything mm -hmm. is so much so that they would prefer to be in Ogun and then target the Lagos market. Yeah. So I see a situation where uh, all those companies, knowing that there's the market in Nigeria, will be situating themselves in countries close to Nigeria. Mm. They will go to Ghana, they will go to Benin, go to Togo, go to other places, knowing that it's, it's going easier. to be easy to get to Nigeria and all that. And then we are losing it. We are losing everything. Yeah. So if they don't put things in order, we will be more or less begging. We'll be the part of the people that are calling corporate beggars, <laughs> like one <laughs> of the topics that we were talking yeah. about this morning. Yeah. And then today, like every other day, a lot of people are trekking. Yeah, we're having a conversation. A lot of, of people are trekking. Like before we came on air, mm -hmm. how uh, so many people were giving us testimonies of people trekking from uh, from the island. Some of them are going as far as Yanukbaja. Mm. When will you get there? When will you come back? So at this point, we may not see uh, raise the, um, the, 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 the salaries of people because companies are also uh, struggling. Well. Yes, but at least you can make provisions for these people. Whoever cannot go home every day because of the transportation mm -hmm. should at least have a place to sleep. Yeah, welfare, welfare should come yes. in. Yes, let, let them at least have a, a place to sleep. So if every company will have 
maybe two companies come together, get an accommodation that is hostel-like, mm -hmm. whatever you can do, but let people who can can stay, stay back and mm -hmm. just keep some money. You're paying someone, even if it's 150000 how much will you pay for, for transport yes, before you come? And if you have a car, you will have to be a partial transporter. So that you, in the morning you're coming to work, you're like, hey, yeah, island, yeah, island, yeah, island. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the only people. way you can afford. Yes. And then even then, how much will you take if you, if you take from, I always use beggar because that's where I know, if you go from beggar to the island, a thousand naira, and you have a car that will take four people, that's four thousand naira, that's eight Less than eight liters of fuel. Yeah. So how long will that take you? It doesn't how even far? do anything. So yeah. whatever it is, so to the people that can sleep, let there be accommodation for them. Or you get a company vehicle that will be dropping them mm -hmm. wherever they're mm -hmm. going to. Because people are suffering. They have to be at work. And they also have to be at home. And they have to feed and feed others. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult. Someone was saying that... Um how do you even save in an economy like this? I mean, our parents, or well, my parents, their generation, you see that they have like civil mm -hmm. jobs, right? And then they're able to save and build houses and buy cars. Like, how do you even save for all of that in this economy? Piggy it's banks now have keys. You know, you know, <laughs> you're opening you know, you know the, the, the local piggy banks we used to have in those days just had a small yep. straight line. Yeah, you and put, the padlock thing. Yeah, you don't even padlock it. You nail it, Ooh, and then true. you just put the money, whatever it is, still maybe at the end of the year. Now it is padlocked, so that anytime you can easily <laughs> open it and you can like, open I need it to and, save myself. Yeah. I don't need to save money, I need to save myself. Yes, yes. Even though in those days you could still take broomstick and remove it when it's what? so difficult. <laughs> but now it's easier. So you cannot save. It's not possible to save. How much will you earn? Even if you're earning 500,000 Naira and you have a car, you will end up maybe spending like 400,000 Naira on the car. Or, you know, it depends on where you're coming from. Idea. You've not talked oh, about rent. your utility bills, your, your rent, your, your school fees, if you have children. Feeding. Even if, feeding and all that. Food You've not so said expensive. it. It's expensive. I mean, we're talking about it um, on the newspaper review. Some, was it last week? We're talking about how a basket of tomatoes yeah. now is about 100,000. Rice is about 60-something thousand. The prices are ridiculous. And like we said, I'm not sure if the president can do anything on this food, drugs, and all of that. But any way you can cushion the effects on people, I think that, that would be great. Bring back subsidy. Bring back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we'll, we'll go on a quick break. I will just look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be having conversations on the National Dailies this morning. Stay with us.